So we're here in the Environmental Sustainability Studies Office. I'm here with Fred Montag. So we're going to talk today about planting your garden for spring. So Fred, why do you think having a garden is so important? It's really important that you take some, some control of your food, even in this day and age. People say, well, I can't afford to spend the time gardening. And my response would be, you really can't afford not to do it because it gives you a safe, secure, source of nutritious food. One of the things that we could do actually would be to grow more of our food where we live. So when we talk about modern gardening, <laughs> I'm really talking about old time gardening, traditional gardening when most people in America had a garden. For people that are just starting with this, is there a good time to start thinking about gardening? Any time of the year, this, this is a time when most people would say things are pretty inactive, but here's, now's a good time to start planning what you want to do. If you've never had a garden before, I would suggest to go, uh, go out in the snow and sit down and see where the shadows fall, where the skeletons of the tree shadows are, so that you know where the shade and the sun patterns are in the summertime and be thinking about where you might want to place a bed or a planting for this summer. I think it takes about 20 years for a patch of ground to grow a gardener. Why is that? Well, you just have to be in tune with your place. You have to have the right situation uh, where you have at least six hours of sunlight a day for where you want to garden. I would not suggest that you plow up the whole yard right away. Some okay. people get in trouble by going too big too fast. And so if you've never gardened before, I'd start with perhaps a bed or two and uh, expand it as you learn and go. So you're gardening essentially for the space that you have. We're not taking command of the space. We're letting the space suggest to us where the best places are. This would be called, strangely enough, working with nature, okay? And so I guess that leads into my second question. So how do you plant your garden? What you like to eat. Cooking and gardening kind of go hand in hand. The idea, I think, is to get into this connection back to what actually gives us life. And gardening connects you back to that. So with Utah's specific soil conditions and also our weather conditions, when should gardeners be planning on planting, or for example, when well, even thinking about not, planting? Well, it's not just the uniqueness of the arid west. Weather is pretty unpredictable. My advice in terms of planting is mm -hmm. look and find out when the growing season is, which for most people would assume it's the date of the last spring frost until the date of the first autumn frost. Sometimes, and usually when is that? Those, when are those well, states? Well, it, it depends on your elevation that you are and, and whether or not you're in the mouth of a canyon or out. But it's usually sometime in April or so. Okay. Where, where I garden, it could be in June, the last spring frost. Okay. My advice would be to plant early. You might get a crop and plant often. Okay, so okay. the other thing that gardeners should keep in mind, I think, is succession planting especially for those plants that, that turn out to be for them the old reliable plants, the plants yeah. that they can depend on. And for my wife and I, this would be chard and kale and broccoli and spinach and collards and carrots and beets and lettuces. Those plants are recommended just because they grow better in Utah or? Well, they're recommended just because we have good luck with them. And so it's really up to the gardener uh, number one, pick your preferences and then, and then try those and, mm -hmm. and then stay with the ones that work and then slowly add more plants. The, the advantage of kale and chard and collards, those are sturdy greens that are very, very nutritious and they produce for a month or more each plant. It's okay to plant a few seeds and see what happens. And if the, if the planting fails, you turn right around and plant some more. I don't believe in garden experts necessarily. I believe that each gardener becomes more and more knowledgeable with each season in his or her own garden. So not only are you planning for the amount of light your plants are gonna get, the amount of space you have, but also what you wanna cook. But also for what you wanna cook and, and understanding that it's, it's a sort of a joyful dance to garden. 
Great, so today you're going to show us a garden plot that you recommend for first-time gardeners? Yes. So what do you recommend for new gardeners that are wanting to take charge of their gardening? We want to make sure that you have the very best spot to grow these seedlings in and that you are able to protect them. What I would recommend is a three foot by six foot bed. This is a scale model. The longest reach here is only 18 inches, so you can reach to the center. Okay. With, uh, with a four by eight bed, the reach is longer than some people's arms. So maybe so, for people like me, <laughs> for this table, that's yeah. about three okay, feet. Okay, this table actually okay. is three feet wide. So this would be the bed, and then it would be six feet long. Now, why, why do we go to all the trouble to make this bed frame? So that we have the bed delineated and we have a level edge all the way around. What that means is that if the lawn is sloping a little bit, we can set these in place level and you can have a garden even on a sloping ground. The other thing about this is that if the soil in your area is not very good, we're going to only use the very best soil in the bed. We don't have to put the soil all over the whole yard. That conserves water, that conserves soil because everything stays in place. So, this is the screen frame. This one is six by three. It fits exactly on top of that bed and it's two feet high. It is covered with some sort of screen. If you want to exclude all insects, you can use window screen, regular door screen. If you want to keep the chickens out because you have backyard chickens, you could just use chicken wire, but that's not going to keep out the imported cabbage butterfly, for instance. Okay. If you used hardware cloth, which is a fine mesh, and it's either a quarter inch mesh or half inch mesh, bees can go in and out, but the cabbage butterfly can't. Okay. And so I would probably recommend spending a little extra money and using quarter inch hardware cloth. For the top, you can make a screen frame like this one. You can make that screen for the top and cover it with the same material. Or if you don't want to do that, you can buy shade cloth, which you might be able to get at a nursery, and you can make this portable cover. These are very handy. For one thing, they store easily for winter. You just roll them up and put them in the garage. The other thing is that they can be moved from bed to bed. If you have multiple beds, I can't stress enough, make everything exactly three feet by six feet outside dimensions so that things can be moved from one bed to another. You'd want to buy probably a seven foot length for one bed. A seven foot length of shade cloth, so it would be seven by six. So it would be seven feet this way, six feet this way. If it's a three foot wide bed, that means you have about a foot left over on each side after you've wrapped some of it around those. Okay. These are just one by twos, uh, one by twos that you can get at the lumber yard. And do you find that withstands even windy weather? This will stay on, yes, it will stay on. Okay. And this protects the whole operation. And this, this is what shade cloth actually looks like. And so in the summertime, the shade cloth actually improves the growth of the plants. You'll notice a lot of nurseries have this shade cloth bright. stretched across their plants. And then at night, especially in the spring and the fall, the shade cloth keeps heat in. And so this is another way to extend the season in spring and fall. The other thing that you could do... So you don't leave the shade cloth all day, it's just for... Um, you, you'll you'll have to experiment, you'll have to see what works. If, if you have a really sunny location, I leave the shade cloth on all the time. In the springtime, I might take the shade cloth off in the daytime because I'm trying to warm up the soil. A couple of things about building the basic bed, and that is that the corners are really important. Okay. And so, this because, is the carpentry skills. Yeah, this is carpentry skills. <laughs> then this would be one corner of this bed frame. These are two by eights, and they are screwed together with, with a three inch deck screw. And so you want to screw those in. And over time, these will loosen up. These corners will loosen up. I would recommend that you buy a 10 foot length of galvanized Roof flashing, you cut it up into six inch lengths for a, for a, a two by eight. And we're going to 
screw that on over those just to keep those screws in place over time. Okay. And that's the screw, that's a truss screw, but you can use whatever you have. And then people ask me, should I stain them or paint them? And I would say, don't do it. Just, this will last 22 years or so. It'll start to decompose, but at least you know it's safe. I wouldn't use landscape timber. I wouldn't use railroad ties. I wouldn't use treated lumber because those are all treated with poison, which is to inhibit soil microbes from decomposing them. And, and I wouldn't paint it uh, because after the second year, it's going to need to be repainted. It's going to be very difficult to paint Probably it. don't want paint specs and, you, and you don't want the paint food. flaking off into the bed either. Right. To make this frame, when you add up the screws and the sheet metal corn, it t it's about $22 for a bed. This is a good project. You could be making some of these beds right now if you wanted to Great. And, and have them ready. You don't have to be rich or have to have fancy technology well, to garden. Yeah, the $22 investment amortized over 22 years, that's a dollar a year that you're spending for the security of having a good fertile bed with good soil and with some sort of a protective device so that you can grow your family's garden plants without pesticides. So let me ask you, where do these drawings come from? The illustrations and most of the methods that I've talked about are in, are in the gardening mm -hmm. book. It's called Gardening and Ecological Approach. So these are all your drawings? And, and yes, I wrote it and Great. illustrated it. Great. And your book includes, I mean, your drawings are so detailed. You have all of the pieces necessary, all of the materials, right. instruction. Uh, it can all be a little bit overwhelming for gardeners. If there's anything that you have questions about, this book will have, we'll well, have the answers. Well, I tried to make it that way. Well, great, Fred. It was so great to talk to you. Thank we you. learned so much today. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave your comments below on what you thought.